Good evening to everyone and welcome to today's session. Another eight weeks to go and uh, we are into the modernity of civilization with a computer based test and uh, a sharp performance of 240 questions answered in 180 minutes and looking forward for a definite day of result where we are compared with our peers who are tested in a spectrum of 15 days that is going to be the look and feel of uh, the neat 2000 and we shall call it 12 or 13 13 being preterm baby delivered in the November as 2012 November so let's make the great start <coughs> The times have changed. Earlier, mock test means you need to come to the center. Now there is no need. Every student who enrolled will get a username password. Coming to the center is only a formality. You can sit anywhere if you are on a honeymoon to Andaman, Nicobar Islands. There also online you can participate in the discussion. What you require is a 1MAPS line. That's all. So today we have a lot of online participants nearly I am able to see 32 participants online and uh, I encourage them to enter the name into the chat box and participate in the discussion so let us make the start <coughs> if you look at the abducent nerve abducence is a part of cavernous sinus along with uh, the carotid artery but whenever the pituitary mass is located I mean enlarging pituitary mass if it is there it will prevent the compression of the abducens so that is the reason though the abducens is a part of the cavernous sinus it won't be compressed in the cavernous sinus because of the cushion which is being offered by the pituitary gland is what I want to underscore to all of you now, uh, which is the largest air sinus? It is the maxillary sinus which is considered to be the largest of all the sinuses is what need to be remembered. <coughs> what maintains the blood brain barrier? It is the endothelial cells which are typically responsible for maintaining the blood brain barrier and there are no fenestrated capillaries absence of fenestrated capillaries and the presence of the tight junctions between the endothelial cells are the ones which are responsible for the blood brain barrier is what I want to underscore to all of you the order of the questions is little different from the paper based uh, paper from that of the online exam but overall the, it is the same 240 questions <coughs> we welcome our students from Guntur, Tirupati, Vaisak, Sikindrabad, Kakinada, Varangal and our online students Dr. Hemu, Vijay etc etc. So you can uh, simply type into the chat box and click so that you are ready for uh, participating in the discussion also. Now how is pituitary derived? The glandular part which is adenohypophysis it is not an ectodermal derivative uh, it is not an endodermal derivative it is derived from the ectoderm in the roof of the mouth of uh, which is called rat case pouch is the point of uh, the origin the old man says I have a difficulty to walk down the stairs and whenever you have inspected his eye it shows a superior and lateral deviation it is very very typical of the paralysis of the superior oblique muscle which is innervated by the trochlear nerve is what you have to fundamentally remember now let me wake you up from the sleep doctor give me an answer for this question a spot question let me see who will answer we have Dr. Sudha, Hemu and uh, Dr. Varun, Dr. Sai so many people online ready to answer along with our students in Tirupati 
Anantapur, Kammam, Vaisag, everywhere across the country in Guwahati. Now tell me doctor, what is the drug that inhibits the ribonucleotide reductase which is used in the cancer chemotherapy? Just like 6 mercaptopurine blocks de novo purine synthesis. 5 fluorouracil inhibits thymidylate synthase. Which is the drug that inhibits ribonucleotide reductase? One wild guess. Biochemistry is going to be 20 marks undigestible. And uh, physiology, 20 marks. Harrison Co. Feng, though, dustbin me. You try to read. Vasudevan's biochemistry as much as Harrisonian's general medicine or read Harrison like Chaurasia or Chaurasia like Harrison whichever is your choice now tell me doctor who will give me the correct answer that's good our online student Dr. Sai has sharply answered correctly hydroxyurea is the drug which typically inhibits the ribonucleotide reductase which converts UDP into deoxy-UDP and CTP is what we have to fundamentally appreciate. A very big clap to Dr. Sai. Now, you have cut the oculomotor. Oculomotor, what does it carry? Typically, it carries the sphincter pupillae fibers which are parasympathetic fibers. Any cutting of the oculomotor nerve typically leads to dilatation of the pupil. It is not the inability to dilate, it is the, it becomes dilated. What you get in oculomotor palsy is basically what? Midriasis. Oculomotor palsy can occur because of two main causes. What are they? If there is a posterior communicating artery aneurysm that can compress oculomotor because oculomotor originates from third and fourth cranial nerve come from midbrain. When it is leaving the midbrain, posterior communicating artery aneurysm can compress it. Any tumor in the middle cranial fossa can compress it. There are surgical causes. You have medical causes like diabetes, hypertensive individuals, their vasonervosum become blocked due to arteriosclerosis and that can lead to development of ischemic necrosis of the oculomotor nerve and oculomotor injury. They are called medical causes. Typically, whenever oculomotor palsy occur because of the medical causes, it spares the parasympathetic fibers. Only those fibers of oculomotor supplying the extraocular muscles get affected. But parasympathetic fibers are not affected. There are surgical causes will involve both the parasympathetic fibers and also the fibers going to the extraocular muscles. So that is the reason pupillary dilatation is a feature only when oculomotor nerve is paralyzed because of surgical causes. But if the oculomotor palsy is because of diabetes or hypertension, pupil is not involved. What is that called? Pupil sparing oculomotor palsy is what you typically come across. Now, postganglionic fibers, where are they basically located? Auriculotemporal branch, lacrimal branch, and zygomaticotemporal branch, they are all carrying the postganglionic parasympathetic fibers. Whereas, cord tympani basically carries the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers which will reach the submandibular ganglion is what you have to fundamentally remember. <coughs> For every online test user, we will give you one username password to access the tests online. Same time, we will also give you one username password to access the video library. You have two icons, take online test now, watch online video. You please call us back and say that I have registered and we will give you one username password for accessing even online video content. 
In that we have 250 hours of MCQ based discussion. It's free next to two months because time is very short. You need to be given a good opportunity to uh, quickly revise. We have around some 18 lectures of anatomy discussing around 800 common questions based on all India AIMS PGI question bank. Topic wise classified. So take an opportunity to review those uh, video discussions under the folder called uh, anatomy in the MDMS folder, MDMS preparation folder. Everybody who enrolled with us for the test program will be given a complimentary username and password. Because the time is 8 weeks, in this 8 weeks you need to quickly revise at least 12,000 questions of the past 15 years of all India AIMS PGI. That's more than enough. Because DNB, I mean, uh, need PG is not going to be anything bigger than our previous state entrance exams or for that matter, all India exam. It's going to be the same, but with 240 question distribution, that's all. There is no big deal about it. Now, we discussed all these things in our regular uh, video lectures, which are available as a in the video library, which you can access. Now, if there is a lesion of glossopharyngeal, it does not involve palatopharyngeus because palatopharyngeus and all other pharyngeal muscles, they are all, they all receive motor innervation from vagus, not from the glossopharyngeal. Where will spinal cord will be ending doctor? Typically in the adults at the level of L2. Hence at the level of L3, L4 or L4, L5, you can comfortably pass the LP needle is what need to be fundamentally remembered. If there is any lesion at the level of T11, there is an interruption for corticospinal tract. So the lower limbs will suffer from, below the level of the lesion will suffer from UMN. Because there is an interruption of corticospinal tract from reaching the androhonsils of the lower limb muscles. Hence lower limb will show the signs of U UMN lesion. So, muscle atrophy is a feature of LMN or UMN doctor, atrophy, fasciculations, eryflexia, they are all features of LMN. So, you do not find muscle atrophy, what you find is normal muscle, but which shows spasticity. You find hyperreflexia, you find Babinski sign positivity. So, these are all the things which you come across, if there is any interruption at the level of uh, the T1, T11 in the spinal cord is what need to be remembered. 